Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. This is Home Show Radio live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions, Tom's answers. Now here's Tom Tynan and Charlie Mosier. And like always, we begin here on uh, Ask Tom Live. Is that what it is? I don't see my little heading. Usually, oh, Tom Tynan, homeshowradio.com. That's not right. Okay, anyway, we're here for Ask Tom Live on Facebook, on YouTube, and that's what we do every Thursday. And Charlie Mosier is with us, and we have a great guest, one of my favorite people. Danny will be with us here in a very short minute or two. In and just of minute. course, in minute, there you go, much better. In minutes, and of course, uh, weekends on the radio at Home Show Radio. You can catch me nine to noon on Saturday, eight to eleven on Sunday, and don't forget the Garden Fellow. I'm waiting for the picture. No, Danny, there he is in the green shirt because he's a growing kind of guy. Saturdays, right before my show, from seven to nine on all of them sports radio 610 in houston texas and you can go to homeshowradio.com and you can stream it there too podcast it spotify it <laughs> charlie fill in the other blanks they can do it any way they want and it's i'm not going to tell them how to do it I mean, <laughs> oh we're, we're a free country you can do it any way you want <laughs> so, <no. Yes. laughs> but danny's with us danny um danny you remember we used to go to the 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 dentist and they'd have that those pictures in the back of the little magazine, you compare one of these is different from the other and you had to figure wait, out. Wait, the Highlight Magazine is yeah. what it was called. Highlights. Yeah. yeah. That's for kids, right? Yeah. Highlights. <laughs> yes, for kids. that's for kids, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the magazines you were looking at, okay? No, hey, no, hey, no, hey be there. nice. Be nice. <laughs> travel now. magazines. That's yeah, it. travel and my favorite cars. You know, those magazines. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So my point is you remember those, right? Where you used to have to figure out what was wrong in the picture? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you um, five seconds to figure out what's wrong with this picture. You ready? Okay. Let's see. This is like oh, Facebook. The background's not blue. I don't see any John no. Ferguson anywhere. Oh, winner, 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 chicken dinner. Okay. There he is. Yeah, oh, we, that's our newest uh, home show garden pro, John Ferguson. At, uh, We're Nature's very happy Ride. with that. Very happy oh. with that because John knows so much about native plants and about kind of um, when it comes to taking care of large spaces. That's one of his specialties. So he's got a book that's called uh, Organic Maintenance for the Professional. That's a really wonderful read. That's a snappy about title. Maintaining spaces. Oh, yeah. It really, <laughs> really draws the hand. He, he spent, he get hire a creative firm to come up with that title for him there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, uh, Is yeah, he associated they, with a nursery? Uh, this is new to me. Is he associated yeah. with yeah, the Yeah, he is. There's an incredible nursery at Nature's Way Resources. Uh, just oh, Nature's Way Resources. Every, okay. Yep. Up in yeah, Conroe. Recently, yeah, yep. they started carrying plants. It was successful, so they developed a whole garden center. And they've staffed it out, and they're continuing to grow. But it's a beautiful spot. Beautiful nicest, place. And again... N nicest guy ever. Next to Tom. Definitely. Yeah. Right, next to Tom. He's right. not the one that was mulching grandmothers, was he? No, that's him. Oh, that's him. <laughs> that really is. That was in Washington State, Mulch Your Grandmother Day. Good night, uh, everyone. A little, a little creepy. <laughs> Nicest. <laughs> he told me that last year at a home show. I'll never forget Nicest. that. I never got that out of my head. <laughs> Nicest guy on the planet, unless you're a grandmother. You unless you're a your grandmother, <laughs> that's right. When, when John Ferguson says, stay off my lawn, he means it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I liked him. <laughs> no, John's a, John is a great guy, and um, mm -hmm. just, uh, we're glad to have him as part of the show. But you know who's else a nice guy is uh, is David uh, David Williamson up at RCW, who is Tom's trusted home show pro for yep. growing things green. And I know that he has some of my green because I pulled into my driveway last night, and there are two big buckets with trees coming out of them in my driveway that came from RCW. You know, and the reason I'm flying back this weekend mm -hmm. is to do nothing but spend after the show, which I'll do the show from my house, spend every afternoon at RCW because it's time for me to plant. I had my whole backyard top dressed, mulched, all the old dead stuff mm -hmm. out. So, Danny, I got a clean palette and I'm going to start planting this weekend. I'm going to give you a right. tip, Tom. Can I give him a garden yes, tip? Yes, sir. Danny, I, mean, yeah, I, I don't mean to, to, to <laughs> chime in on this, but here's my garden tip for you. 
get there early because I'm here to tell you. Hey, <laughs> but it is. I was there. He was unloading two hey. yeah. semi trailers mm -hmm. of plants, mm -hmm. and people were picking them up. Mm -hmm. before, he said, "Tom, you see yep. this? Wow. By tomorrow afternoon, mm -hmm. it's all gone, and we oh, have more coming in." Without a doubt. Hey, do me a favor, Tom, the gain knob on the back of your mic. Can you turn that down a little? Because we're, we're overdriving it here a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it, it's that way. Sandy was up at um, at Sherry's place at Plants for All Seasons, on, I think, on, um, I don't know. She's there every day. But um, I think she, Sandy spends more time at the nurseries than the nursery owners these days because we it's got fun. walloped in the backyard. I mean, walloped. Mm. And uh, she has been... She's been unwalloping the backyard. Be the best it's way. It's wild. To say. Uh, depending on what day you get to one of the garden, you know, pro locations, one day it could be totally filled with plants, and then you come back in a couple of days and it's wiped out. I mean, people Complete are buying through. so many plants. Mm -hmm. So many yeah, plants. I think and more plants are being bought than we lost. We had coffee, uh, Zach and I. I you. you know Zach, who does all the web stuff around here. Um, yeah. Yeah, he and I had breakfast this morning with a client of ours from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who's in the um, the gardening business. The, uh, he's more of a landscape kind of contractor that we work with out there. And uh, he was here in town for a conference, and we had breakfast. He was, he was telling me that their problem out there is they can't get product because it's all getting sucked into Texas and Oklahoma. So this yeah, is a nationwide we'll issue that we're, yeah, and that's exactly right. So that's what's happening now. So what a happy note to start the show on. Well, the happy note it's, is that hey, it, our, our local retail centers have the product. That's the happy note. So mm -hmm. sorry about your guy in New Mexico, but, uh, you know, <laughs> our local people are getting it from all over the country. So yeah. for your lawns, he's, out, he's outside our listening area. I don't care. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I care about our... Wait, wait a minute. We're on the web. If you're on the planet... Uh -oh. We care about you. So. <laughs> That's right. So if you're so in the International Space Station and you have a problem with this, it's on you. So there it is. So... Danny, you know what we, Tom and I do here every Thursday at 4 o'clock, besides kibitz around like this? Blue, we answer, blue shirts? We, we, do, we do. well, And his shirt isn't quite so blue. Tom has had a little trouble with his fancy pants camera like this one, so he's on his computer oh, camera Oh, nobody today. cares. I, but I know. Us. Well, I do. Well, I'm just trying to explain. I know you do, because, no. because people want to see every pore of your skin, Tom. And so we're yeah, just no explaining why they're not. <laughs> but we get to see all your pores, Charlie, because you have the big camera. Yes, but we I put this on before the show, so right not now. so much. So, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So anyway, what we do here is we answer questions that come to us for the uh, from the Ask Tom page, which is right there. There, um, they click that blue button and they send us questions, and we answer them here on uh, our Facebook show, and that's what we're fixing to do. But and I also I am remiss, and I apologize if anybody has already done it. I didn't open the. The right window here so oh we've already got questions coming in here um a whole bunch of them so um we get questions the and the camera doesn't matter as long as we can answer the questions tom tynan nails it again so all right so here's the thing we if you have questions home improvement or today because we have uh, danny um we can also answer gardening questions so mm -hmm. i mean you know, we got one last week and we're like oh call danny so, and and Danny, you Pretty know, much was the answer called Danny. <laughs> yes. well, yeah, and Danny will be here the last Thursday of every month. He's just learning that now. Doesn't he look happy? <laughs> I can't. Oh wait, I forget. I can talk. That's great. How exciting! This is great. I love that. Uh, yes. Okay, okay well, let me do it. People with the gardening. Let me do this right. Danny will be here the last Thursday of every month. The audience is All right. Excited. All right. My mom was a loud one. Okay. My mom was. There's one in the, There's always one. All right. So, Danny, I want to put you on hold for a second. We're going to answer some questions here with Tom real quick um, that, we've, that are coming in here. Here's one, first of all, uh, comes from uh, Alfred Paul. He says, do you caulk joints in hardy plank siding or leave them open? I've read to do both. Which is the right way, Tom? First off, you never caulk horizontal joints. If you have a lap siding, one side goes over the other, you never caulk underneath between the boards, never in any situation. Now, when you have trim and you're butting up against the trim, then you would caulk those joints for the, before the paint job. And that just gives it a smoother look. A good quality caulk will flex a little bit, so you get a nice joint there. 
Uh, if you don't, you're going to see a little crack line. Now, if you take your trim and put it uh, above the siding, then you don't caulk that. It's only when you butt against it where you caulk it. And that's the only place. And if you make a nice tight joint where the boards come together, you don't need to caulk. If you want to, go ahead. It's not going to hurt it, but never the horizontal and never if you put your trim over the hardy. All right, that's fair enough. Now, again, if you have questions, let me make this thing come up here. Look, it's so fancy. You can go ahead and add your questions down in the comments section, and Tom will answer them, and so will Danny. In fact, I've got one here for you, Danny. We just got in from uh, somebody here. Good Trish deal. Brown writes to us. She wants to know, do I mulch first, then plant, or plant, then mulch? Which is it? Oh, hang on, Danny. I, I have, your microphone's turned off. Let me speak to the broadcast engineer and get that fixed. Would you please fix that? Hang on. Why won't his mic come on? There you go, Danny. You're on now. Too. There we go. We so. got it. We got it. So the um, we are that, kids. We are professionals. Don't try this at home. This is, okay. It's as good as it gets. No, we um we generally want to plant and then mulch. So what happens is when you mulch first and you plant, then you you bring up a bunch of the clay, a bunch of the soil that's your actual planting medium, and you get it all messy. Um, and so what you do is you, you lay the plants out, dig the holes, then come back with a mulch as the last phase, uh, kind of bouncing it out, smoothing it out. And then I like to get one of those hard rakes, flip it upside down and use that uh, smooth part to spread the mulch around, make it perfectly flat. So, so yes. All right. Yes. So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer plant is um, mulch. Plant, plant and mulch. Then mulch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, that's not right. But and of course, it never hurts to throw a little micro life down in there in the hole when you're planting. Isn't that right? So you would do that. Yeah. A great thing to do is in the hole, but especially around the hole, mm -hmm. and do that before you mulch. But if you forget that step, micro life is so great, and it will get through that mulch if you mm -hmm. forget to do it before the mulch, or if you've already done mulch and you still want mm -hmm. to do micro life. Trish, Trish. He's, got to, he's got to answer back. Look at that. Thanks. I like that. That's true. We are. So nice. This is all interactive. It's the I've high never tech. got an answer thanks back. Thank you, Danny. Wow, Danny, you've brought a level of civility to the program that's new. You have. We, we should have you here every week. Danny for president. Oh, wow. I <laughs> really went from one <laughs> really? week. Danny's like, quick. oh, great. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. That's a job I want. <laughs> no, it's fun. Actually, if if you like Dan, if you like Danny on this, he's on. He does this on Wednesdays. Um, That's right. What Every what time single Wednesday. Three uh, o'clock. It's three thirty here on Facebook. Uh, YouTube is another great place to watch it. And mm -hmm. We always have a guest, a knowledgeable guest from a uh, garden club or a nonprofit that comes in and dishes out info also. So, and we do the he same is, thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people from nonprofits. So our receptionist will come in now and then and be on the show. And she's so knowledgeable. She she's is. Like, yeah. I never see her when I come to the office, though. I don't know why. Uh, she's off when she's you're like, we don't have profit. one. She's at home. <laughs> she's at home. Okay. Uh -oh. All right. So, Dan, I tell you what. We have questions for Tom, and we have questions for, for, for you. Let me start with one here for Tom, and then we'll come to you. And by the way, again, if you want to put a question in there, it's real easy. You can ask Tom. It says Tom, but Danny, too. You can put your questions in the comments section, and we will and we will get to you. So let's get to one here for you, Tom, and then I'll come. We'll go back and forth. How's that sound? All right. So Tom, first one for you. He says, uh, David and Tom Ball says we had hailstorm here, and I have a one-story three-bedroom home, seventeen hundred square feet. One roofer looked at it and says we can't have ridge vents because the roof isn't long enough, and he wants to put in solar vents. Is that right? Or to use solar vents? The home across the street is getting ridge vents, and but they're using a different roofer. I don't know what his, his roof looks like and, or if the homes are exactly the same. I assume he means they're pretty much identical. Uh, if that's the case, I'm a ridge vent guy. I think you should put ridge vents in. Some people say, well, you don't have enough ridge, and that might be, but you do have some. So I like to put the ridge vents where I can, the full length. Now, if it's a hip roof and you have hips going down, then I would put an air hawk on either end of the ridge vent, just a couple rows of shingles down from the top and that will suffice on the ends. A lot of roofers like to sell the solar vents. I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. I think it's, it's fine. I think that it's not necessary all the time, but I would not omit the ridge vents, even if you did supplement with a solar vent. If you have ridge, I like the ridge vents, because let's face it, it's the highest point of the roof. It's where the moist, most heat's gonna collect, and it's where the most heat will leave 
and you want it to regenerate and move it. So the only way to move it in is to move it out. Hang on a minute, Tom. I'm having uh, I'm having a little issue here. I have uh, this has happened to me before where I can't hear you suddenly and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to well, fix this while we're doing the show. I can't hear a word you're saying. Hang on a second. I'm going to have to. Oh. I'm going to have to make a small change here in my system to make this work. Well, now, and ladies and gentlemen, like we can talk about Charlie, and he won't know what we're saying. So I can say mm -hmm. very mean and rude things about him. I don't know what him. Tom's talking about. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> you're saying bad so things. So we can smile are. like this and call him bad names. I can't hear you. And we. Oh, maybe Charlie's hearing me now. I'm not sure. Hmm. So let me tell you a little story about Charlie. <laughs> okay, so I'm just not going to be able to hear you. I know you can hear us both. Chad's saying he can hear us both, but for some reason my I earbud hear has stopped working, and I can't tell you why. So isn't that exciting? Well, if Chad's listening, Chad, we're having one of those technical days. You can yes, we to are. Charlie. Okay, I've got speakers <laughs> back. I can hear you now. Okay, so what did speakers? you say? About, what did you say while I wasn't listening? We were right. telling Charlie stories. They were very good. All the wonderful things you do for everybody in the community and everything. So we were only talking about you. So you you clearly didn't have enough time. So I'll <laughs> lean back. <laughs> no, but I was getting there when <laughs> Chad rudely interrupted. Chad People said, don't know who Chad is. Chad's our executive producer. He's downstairs sitting right underneath Charlie, uh, policing the whole thing. He's actually the man behind the curtain. Can you hear me now? <laughs> no, I can hear you. I'm just sharing. Oh, okay, good. Now. So anyway, sure. all right. So <laughs> Danny is like, this is Danny's like, man, my show is so much better than this. We're right. having a great technical day. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then that the rails, go, the train goes off the rail, Danny, and I just try to hold on. So that's all we're doing here today. So but this is what happens. The last two weeks, Tom and I had to record because I had conflicts. I had to travel and had some it's clients. True, things. you had weddings. And so, yeah, so stuff. we're a little out of we're a little, a little out of practice doing this live. I think that's what it comes down to. So, all right, here's your first. You question, know, if Amy. I take a, what's okay, that? Go ahead. No, no, hold on. I Where'd said when go? I used to take vacation from radio for a couple of weeks, you do get out of practice, and the first show back would be a mess. Not that the other ones aren't either. But you're right, Charlie. There is a practice to this. People don't realize it's not all easy sometimes. Well, I will be, and I will be off again. Um, uh oh. <laughs> not next Thursday, but the following Thursday, I'll be gone. And if you care to know why, I'll tell you a little later in the show. Danny, I got another one for you here, uh, but it's not. It has nothing to do with business. It's nothing but fun and games. So, um, Trish, Trish is back. She wants to know one other question. Is there an environmentally friendly way to kill those crazy ants? You know the ones I'm talking about? Yeah, they uh, move very fast and eat electrical wires. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few uh, ways. In fact, the, the hormone traps are pretty environmentally friendly when it comes down to it. Those are not a dangerous thing. Surprisingly enough, fire ants love eating crazy ants. So if you want to dig up a bucket of fire ants and move it over to some crazy ants, you'll eliminate the problem pretty quickly. You're kidding me, but right? No environmental impact. I no, no, one not of these. At all. <laughs> <laughs> They're too fast. They're so yeah, fast. They are. No, Advion. Advion's a great product. Um, Monterey has a great. It's called Fire Ant Control, but it works on crazy ants. They're baits, and so you don't put down very much, and you don't do it when the uh, mound is active or or their little dusty areas active and you put it down there and they'll deliver it to the queen. Crazy ants only have one queen and fire ants have nine or up to nine. And so a lot easier to kill fire ants with a bait than it is. I mean, crazy ants with a bait than it is with a fire ant. So the fire ants are less discriminating than the crazy ants and yet they call them crazy. Yeah. yeah well, weird. wasn't their official name Raspberry? Wasn't it? Yeah, named it was after a guy named Raspberry. A doctor Raspberry. I think he was a, yeah, he was a, a, a pest and control guy up near the Ship Channel. I think yeah. he's the one who's credited with discovering the species. Are you familiar with that, Danny? Yeah, they were in the boats. Yeah, I thought yeah. his name was Doctor Crazy. <laughs> Doctor Crazy. <laughs> that's why name. we called him you know, that. That's just what his friends. No, that's call him. a different show, Danny. <laughs> that's not our show. No, that's, oh, gotcha, that's just gotcha. what his friends call him. So. <laughs> yeah, fine. Yes, raspberry ants. <laughs> that's that's crazy. right. Okay. But they only have one queen. That's the big thing. So baits work great on them. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Here's one for you, Danny. This comes from a motto in Mission Ben. He says, "I have weeds in my front yard." He wants to know what's a good product. 
um, to de-weed and feed my St. Augustine grass? So St. Augustine, there really is not a one product sort of situation. It is almost a broad weed leaf. It doesn't travel underground very much, and that means it's susceptible to a lot of the kind of national uh, weed and feeds. Also, a lot of those national weed and feeds have things that can damage your trees down here, mm -hmm. and that's a big no-no. So we want to use two different products. If you're dealing with St. Augustine, Agrilon is phenomenal for de-weeding the lawn. And you can see the list, that, the list of weeds that they have on their label is so long, and it's so impressive, and it's like our weeds. So Agrilon to de-weed, and you can put it out in a shaker or a blower or something like that. It's a powder. And, um, and then follow up with some Microlife. So the 624 is great. A lot of times, if you can just make your soil healthier, you won't have weeds at all. So that's kind of a big thing there is make healthier soil with good compost and good fertilizer. All right. I'd, I've been remiss in doing my normal call uh, call out here of everybody who's uh, we, we see that's that's with us here. Donna's joined us. Tasha, Richard, thank you for being with us here today on the show. Nice. And, and, yeah. uh, we're, we, and, and we are um, 22 minutes into the show and almost have our act together. So nice. if you have a question for Tom or Danny, just go ahead and put it in the comment section. We'll include you as well. Tom, here's one from a website here. It says, this is Grady and Katie. He says, uh, how does hard water in Houston yes. affect a tankless water heater? Well, I'll just uh, address hard water anywhere. Hard water will damage anything. It'll damage uh, water heaters. It'll damage dishwashers. It'll damage your glass and your showers. It's just the nature of hard water. So with a on-demand water heater, the one difference is as opposed to a tank, a tank will build up all the hard water deposits in the bottom where a on-demand won't do that. But with an on-demand water heater, it still will build up in the uh, areas where you have the, the tubes going through the water heater itself. So they still have to be cleaned once in a while. Uh, best always is to have a water softener to avoid all that. If you have an electric uh, on-demand water heater, you still are supposedly having to take out and uh, scrub down or change the heating elements like you would in a gas water heating tank. So it doesn't eliminate it. It's a little bit different but it still can do damage to it over time. And that damage usually means it's come to the end of its life and you end up buying a new one, a fresh one, because to try to keep them clean with all those hard water deposits that start to eat away at any kind of piece of equipment, it's very difficult. So I always stress the best thing is to get a water softener. Then you, you eliminate all these problems from your life, right down whether it's a tank, whether it's an on-demand, my water heaters in my home, I've always had a water softener. I'm going 23 years now with one tank and two on demands. I have had no problems at all. And I'm already, I'm stretching my time now because I'm going to have to replace them eventually, I assume. But right now they're still working great. But get a water softener because hard water damages everything all over the country. What about the garden, Danny? I mean, does is hard water have an effect on gardens? Yeah, actually, the um, the two big, really? you know, minerals that they add are the chloramine and the fluoride. And so the fluoride is really bad for those microbes that we're relying on to do a lot of the work in the soil. And the chloramine um, is, sorry, the fluoride is actually bad for your plants. That one is a plant killer. So if you have like a, you know, if it ever smells like, like bleach in your water, try not to use it to, to water the hose or water your garden. So chloramine and fluoride um, kill those microbes and can hurt the plant. The big damage they do is on the leaves of your plant. That's one of the reasons it's so key to water the ground. So if you've got roses or azaleas or something like that, and your sprinkler system's spraying right up into them, you're always gonna be dealing with disease threats and disease problems. Mm -hmm. And so uh, lower, lower the uh, angle of that sprinkler or get some drips or something like that. If you hand water, those wands are nice because it's really important to water the soil and not the plant. That's the best way to kind of avoid damage. Yeah, and Charlie, let home. me add to that, yeah. that it's not a filter, a water soft, it's not a hard water issue. He's talking about chloramines and fluorides. That has to be filtered out. Water softeners don't take that out. So a water softener would not help his issue. And Danny, you might be able to help me with this. Isn't softened water bad because a little bit of salt in there or is that not a big issue? 
Uh, I don't think it's bad over time. I mean, it's just one of those things where okay. if you have healthy soils, it filters a lot of stuff. It turns that salt into minerals and kind of delivers it. So, but yeah, you're right. Okay. The uh, hard water really isn't an issue. It's that chloramine yeah. fluoride. It's mm. Oh, the chloramines, that's an ammonia base. That can be bad for everything, even people. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I can't so I don't shower. Home. I can't wait to get home and find out what Sandy's bought to fix this. So <laughs> there is a she sits and takes there, notes and she's like, no. there, there is a very easy to use little filter that all the garden pros sell that's for filtering out um, those two kind of things specifically. And actually, I put them on my hose and I stopped seeds I planted in March popped up and it was like September. So it was kind of wild how well that worked. You hear that, Sandy? Danny was our guest today. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 20 bucks. Just $20. 20 not, Maybe 50 well, Maybe honey, 50 and, out of and, 80 And Sandy, if you're watching, remember, we have five hose bibs. So, you know, that's 100 bucks right there. So. so that means five new hoses and some new sprinklers and had held attachments. It's funny right you say Andy? that. That's one of the things we had to replace were hoses. After the <laughs> okay, fine. She had this, well, these, had these really nice ones that were real light and everything. And after the after the freeze, they were gone. So mm. anyway, all right, um, Tom, I got one for you here that's come in from um, uh, Jeff. He wants to know: Should I go with a thirty-six month electric contract? The rate is eight point four cents, and it seems to be the lowest in my area. Actually, I think that's a great idea. I just switched mine. I just went through the shopping process, and I got eight point five for two years. And that was the lowest in my area. And I was really pleased because the company that I was with was giving me 6.6, .6, but their lowest rate they would give me on renewal was 10.5. And right now with the volatility of what's going on in Washington and everything, eight point something is really a deal that I would lock into. That's gonna give him three months to see how everything calms down because we're having some energy issues if people watch any of the news, what's going on in politics. I'm not sure where the rates are gonna go right now, but I can tell you this, it has not changed months since January 1st. So I would tell people lock in now, if he can get 36 months, that's gonna take him three years and we'll find out better what's going on after that. I think that's a great option for him right now. I would tell him to click the yes button at this moment. Now remember that 8.5, if he reads it right, or 8.4, whatever it might be, that includes the today's uh, fees that are going with the actual cost of the electricity, so it's combined. And what they find out is gonna happen is not necessarily the cost of energy gonna rise fast, but because of all the uh, restrictions from the government being put on delivery systems and stuff that we're dealing with now, the other fees they suspect are gonna go up quite a bit in the next few months. So I would tell everybody to lock into the lowest energy rate. I think you'll have a better chance of sustaining any kind of real surprises down the road, although I think we're still gonna see some. Mm. It's, it is, uh, I just, cause we just renewed ours. I wish I had known to go that far out. And, uh, but it, it, yeah, I usually it, don't recommend it. You're right, Charlie. But this time, uh -huh. uh, because of the, the election and everything, and I'm not getting on anybody, it's, I think it's a good choice. I wish I could have got 36. I could only get 24. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to pick on anybody. Just, you know, maybe somebody who lives between, um, no, 1598 and 1601 Pennsylvania Avenue, somewhere in there. Um, no. <laughs> I'm not canceled yet. <laughs> not yet, no. but we're working on it, buddy. All yeah, right, no kidding. <laughs> Dan, I got another one for you. And uh, let me fix something, by the way, here for some reason. There we this go. can't, this has not taken my camera. So let me just fix that right here. There I am. All right. He says, uh, this is from Grady. He says, um, oh, he's, all, this is, uh, I didn't ask you this one yet. He says, I re I'm ready to mulch. And I remember you saying something about not using colored mulch but didn't hear which mulch you recommended. What is your recommended mulch, Dan? Oh, well, if you want black mulch, black velvet is a beautiful mulch from Landscaper's Pride. Uh, dark black, but it's aged pine bark. And so it's not, a, it's not super bad wood that's been dyed with some chemical, which is what most black mulches are. Um, if you really want healthy plants, um, which I'm assuming you want, because that's why you asked the question. But uh, Nature's Way Resources has this great 
they're just simply put their compost is beautiful and black. So really great options if you want a black mulch. Uh, that black velvet from Landscapers Pride is gorgeous. If you want red mulch, <clears throat> that's a little harder. But pine straw holds a great red color, lasts a long time, does a great job subduing, subduing weed seeds. So those are the two recommendations if you want a colored mulch. What now? What makes a color mulch bad? I mean, is it is the fact they're putting dyes and stuff in there? I mean, is that the the problem here? I mean, don't they use dyes that are friendly to to plants and stuff? There are some friendly dyes, um, and so if a company's using them, they don't generally post it or tell us. So we don't know what's going on there. We don't know what's making it dark. But my bigger problem is the wood they use has to be completely dried out and heartwood. That's not the nutritional wood. That's not the wood that's real rich in nitrogen or minerals or anything. And because it's dried up, it's going to suck up nitrogen from the soil and it's going to kind of suck water up and not be that great layer of protection and nutrition that mulch should be. So that's my problem is it's two pronged the, the dye and the uh, crappy mulch they use. Excuse my language. Whoa. <laughs> This is a family show, buddy. I don't know what's going on on that garden pro show, I know. but you know what? Oh man, we get yeah. dirty. <laughs> no, but yeah, <laughs> nice. and, 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 and 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 you make a really good point there, Danny. I mean, there there are people who um, put garden. I've seen mulch go down that just doesn't seem right. It's like somebody bought cheap mulch somewhere, and like you said, they're making it out of pallets and things like that. It's just not the right kind of wood. So. Um, I guess buying it from, you know, a trusted landscaper, maybe going to the garden pros and, and RCW and, and getting it from somebody like that. Yeah. And those places are kind of really curating their choices on what works. Mm -hmm. Their, their worst nightmare is somebody coming in and be like, Hey, you sold me all this mulch and it's terrible, uh, no matter what the price point. And so right. they're going to carry stuff that works for you. I mean, we obviously love landscapers pride and nature's way resources. And those two are pretty ubiquitous at RCW and all the co-op members. You hear that, Tom? It's ubiquitous. I use Nature's Pride. That's it, what I buy in the bags. I know. It's ubiquitous. Yep. No, Danny's, I can't do that. Danny's not only bringing knowledge, he's bringing the big words. I'm not even sure what it means, so I don't even comment on I think it like means that. it means all everybody everywhere. They take out, right? It means it likes everybody. He's he's a nice nice mulch. Danny Heckham, some of it looks plastic. Are there plastic mulches? Are there fake mulches people put down? <laughs> Yeah, I've they work great with fake plants. Looking stuff lately. <laughs> yeah, fake plants. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have. I've Rubber seen mulch, some silk plants. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I did. I have been at a lot of different mulch facilities, and it is wild because you see the big pile of leaves and branches, and you're like, "That's great," and then they're like, "There's this pile of um, old cabinet wood, stuff like that," and that's what they grind up to turn into the black mulch, and it's like it's just not nutritious. That's my, that's honestly, it's like, I'm all, we're about going to be about good soil. Cause remember folks, healthy roots, that unlocks everything else. If you have healthy roots, you have healthy, everything else. And so, um, you know, you want healthy roots. So good mulch. So I know. See up here, I had, did not have healthy roots. See, that's the mulch you used. See, I was thinking. <laughs> always give me that look like I it, have here. No, it's funny that Tom t says that cause he's talking about those. And I started thinking about it from a, from a counseling point of view, you need healthy roots. Me too. Yeah. You know, you do too. Trauma, uh, trauma. That's you know. it. All right. Do you want and trauma? On... Get this at seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can get your well, questions help. here in front of these in front of the brain trust. While we're at it today, yeah, go ahead and put it in the comment <laughs> section down underneath, and yeah, we'll do. bring it up here just like we did with Jeff and Karen and everybody else who's been sending in the questions. Tom, I got another one for you from the Ask Tom box here. This one says. Sir. Is there a way to ensure the air quality of a garage that's suitable for somebody to breathe indefinitely if the obvious things such as are, re are removed, such as motor vehicles and charcoal, propane grills, and all that? Uh, when this question came in, I looked at it and I said, I don't, I'm not sure I follow the question, but I guess she's worried about just, you know, things that are outgassing or VOC and things like that in a garage. Well, the word that bothers me of this whole question is indefinitely. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm thinking, is this like uh, some kind of caged person they're going to put in there or something? Uh, what I would say is this, like air anywhere, you need fresh air exchanges. So if I took just the air in a garage at this moment 
and put it all together in a little place where it would never get any fresh air and you put somebody in there, eventually that person's going to die. The oxygen will be all used up and it'll be just uh, like a vacuum. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but if you have air exchanges and there's nothing in there that's toxic, it's probably going to be just as good as any other part of your home where you're going to have the same thing. But the fact of the matter, could you lock someone in a garage with no fresh air and live indefinitely? No. I can't so I imagine why anybody, question was phrased. Yeah, I can't imagine why anybody would want to live indefinitely in the garage, but well, or somebody's going to be forced to live indefinitely in a garage. But uh, fresh air exchanges, getting anything toxic in the garage out, you know, even even fertilizers like MicroLife and stuff, we love them, but you don't want to be breathing that stuff mm -hmm. all the time because we're not a plant. Right. We're living, but we're not a plant. You want just fresh air like you would go outside, get some fresh air, vitamin D, and, and that's how you want your air in your house to be also. So, yeah, I, yes, I remember. You could, you could turn a garage into a living space, yes. Okay, I guess that's kind of the question is, she going to turn it into yeah. a living space or something? I guess that's well, and that's why what I, you're saying. Yeah, well, I, I'm also wondering, and if, are they going to have a puppy mill and fill it full of animals and keep it locked up? And will the puppies die? You know, I don't want anything creepy going on. But if you want to make a living space for a human being and healthy, absolutely. You can convert garages into, into living spaces. And yeah, you don't want the car and the gasoline and the fertilizers and the fungicides and all that in there. So get rid of that. And you're good. Kind of went dark there, Tom. Well, I, it, the question was worded funny, so it kind of freaked me out. Funny how? Funny like a clown? Like it's here to amuse? <laughs> funny, you? yeah, like a clown. Okay, let's okay. go to movies now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got one more for you here from Joe Joy. And Danny, hey, we, we, Danny, we, we haven't Did we lose Danny? Oh, there Just he taking is. care of some business here. Oh, Hang he's on eating lunch. Right? <laughs> All right. Joy in Taylor <laughs> Village, which is out by Kima, says, uh, do you recommend vinyl fencing? If so, where can I get some? Well, I have one expert that is a vinyl fencing expert. It's Charlie Mosier because his mother owns a bunch of it, I do believe. Uh, and I think it's a fine fence. She's had good luck with hers, right? She likes her vinyl fence. Yes? Yeah. I Yeah. I no? mean, she. my mom lives in Salt Lake City. Well, South, in Sandy, well, Utah. And, that's fine. And it's very common down there, but so is vinyl siding. Um, so there's just, a, there's yeah. an entire tastemaker issue with, with the, with I know, the but vinyl that. siding actually will perform pretty well in that climate. Yeah. Vinyl fencing down here will perform great too in the Houston area. But do I know someone, if I was going to put vinyl fencing in and I just had a fence built in my house, uh, yesterday, they finished it all in one day. I called my fence expert, my garden expert when it comes to landscaping and hardscapes and outdoor spaces. It was Mike Ball, irrigation, landscaping and lighting. So if you're looking for vinyl fences, someone to install them, you want to find out what your op options are. This guy deals with this stuff every day. They did a great job for me. In fact, they're the ones that cleaned my whole yard out, got rid of the dead stuff, remulched everything. He's busy, but he'll certainly talk to you on the phone. He's a nice gentleman. And he would know about vinyl fencing and who would be the person or the company to go to to buy it, no doubt. Mm. I've just never owned it, so... I'm sure you have to clean it. It's going to get moldy and mildewy, and, and it's it's Houston. So you'd have to go around and scrub it and clean it because vinyl cleans up very nice. Just like vinyl siding on a home, you still have to clean it. It's not just the end all. You never touch it again. I think, I mean, I, 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 I got to say, Joy, my experience of that stuff is it looks so cheap. And it just doesn't, I, I, well, it's, you know. My dad, my dad taught me an important thing when I was young. He was in the car business. And he said, that's why they make red cars and that's why they make blue cars. So you know what? If you like it, that's awesome. And Mike Ball could probably help you out with it. But, you know, Danny, I don't know about you. I'd, I'd rather have something more natural in the backyard. Danny doesn't uh, want absolutely. any fences at all. He roams free. He's like yes, those he is. cageless he's, chickens. He's a, he's a cage free <laughs> garden pro. Cage free. When are we going to stop eggs. building the barriers? The barriers between us, they got to go, you know. Well, I can't people live in, the in the garage the with oh, indef oh, indefinite oh, air. <laughs> yeah. No, Danny, I never would cage an egg. I know people put eggs in cages. Mm. That's horrible. I use the cage-free eggs. That's great. That's not what they mean. <laughs> That's man. great. Oh, okay. Danny's getting mad now. <laughs> it's like, hold on <laughs> Well done. Man. I know. I know. I know. I've been a little distracted with technology today, but I don't think that's. What I'm, doing. <laughs> yes. I'm still thinking about those. Uh, that lady that wants to move into the garage, but wants to know if she needs to get a car. <laughs> oh, the the puppy mill. Yes. 
<laughs> no, no, it could be that, you know, it could be what they're trying to do is, is make it, you know, you, it, I've seen these things now where people have these screens that come down and they use their garage as like a, a, a recreational space at night or whatever. And I'm like, I guess one way to go. You know, and a lot of people are making, uh, they're bringing their, their parents home and maybe it's going to be a garage apartment where they can live. You can, you can convert a garage. It's going to be fine. I think it was just the way that it was worded about indefinitely in the air because you can have fresh air come in. Yeah, I think we're going to be hearing from, I think I'll be, we'll be, be hearing from uh, Patty's attorney. Uh, and I'll, no, and I'll give, him, give him a question. Okay, so Jeff, Jeff is obviously a big fan of yours because uh, he's come back with another question for us here, um, Danny. In fact, it says, he, he, he says to you quite personally, um, question for the plant guy. Um, I just <laughs> nice. I just planted a peach tree and a lemon tree about a month ago. What else do I need to do? Well, that's a you're gonna make live a great life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe uh, make some pie dough. No. Whew. Well, you want to fertilize. So the peach tree and the lemon tree both need a lot more minerals than kind of your lawn does. And so that's where Microlife has a citrus food, a citrus fertilizer, and it is really a mineral pack because they're much more complex plants when they make those big fruits like they do. A big killer of peach trees is people planting too low. And so if you only planted a month ago, I would get out there and check to see the level of the top layer of roots. If you got any sort of kind of beveling at all, any lowering of that area, you're looking at a bowl, that tree will die quickly. Uh, less than a year, it'll be gone. And your, peach, your lemon tree will see a lot more bugs and won't, won't uh, harvest like you, like you hope. And so, Checking that, checking the height of the planting. You can always pull it out. It probably hasn't grown very much in the root section and just getting a little bit more soil down at the bottom of that can go a very long way. But uh, lastly, you know, if you just got it in and you have like a bunch of fruit on it and it's already full sized, you can leave it. But if you have a bunch of little bitty fruit on there, I would take most of them off um, if they're in the ground because we want to push that root growth. Um, now you can leave four or five, six, seven, something like that. But sometimes you get them and there's 30, 40 on there. And that's just not great for the roots. Danny, you helped me. I want to, I want to just, uh, compliment and reinforce what you just said. You know, I planted, planted all those apples and, and pears at one time I had talked to you about and half of them died. And the comment you made to me was you, you probably planted them too low. So when I replanted, I really made sure they were up out of the ground and mold, put the mulch up higher so that bottom of that tree was dry and man they're doing great now so it's exactly a mistake i think a lot of people make with those types of trees we want to get them really deep in the ground and we think we're doing good and apparently we're not and you're the man that knew that well it's great news because yeah. we don't have to dig our hole as deep less work you know Boom. that's it you know what it was true <laughs> too i actually had to build it up it was it was I only dug it half the half the depth Mm -hmm. the, I know I dug it the right depth. The other one I dug too deep. We it was one yes. of the few bright pieces of of loss in our backyard. We used to have this grapefruit tree. <laughs> nice. This thing, oh. I swear to God, it was three stories tall, and it's like grapefruits are good, but good night. You we we used to be we 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 go out at night and leave them on neighbors' porches. Let's get rid of these grapefruits. <laughs> and it's like when we came out and saw that that thing was dead, it was almost like. Yay. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's sad. Oh, no. so my sad. Was grapefruits like... were my favorite trees <laughs> yeah. and I lost them. Yeah, oh, I felt like man. Willy Wonka. No, don't. Stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I love my grapefruits. So, no, they, like they can make hundreds of fruit. Hundreds and hundreds of yeah. fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I think what it is, it, we inherited that tree. And uh, you mm. know what else we had? And I wonder if this is going to happen to people, Danny, with their fruit trees. And it'll be, it, they'll have to wait until harvest season to find out is uh, we had a tree one time. We had a cold winter since we've been in the house the last 10 years. And that next spring we got fruit, but when we bit into it. It was, it was not a happy fruit. It was just a really hmm. horrible fruit. And, and I know you explained that they died back to the graft. And I'm wondering, hmm. how, is it possible that people may think that their tree has survived, but really it's, it, that's happened to them and they won't know till the fruit's ready? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's one of the best things to do if you are buying fruit trees is to know where the graft line is. It's a diagonal scar, sometimes a little swelling, very close to the soil on the trunk. Anything that grows from beneath that, avocado, peach, nectarine, citrus, whatever, is not the fruit. 
So I, more than once, I have people stop me and be like, hey, I have a problem. My lime tree is making oranges. What do I do? How do I get it to make limes again? And what happened is, is their rootstock of their lime tree that was cold sensitive died and they got, they got oranges that are gross. So always know where that graft is. Make sure anything beneath that gets taken off. Big rule, yeah. Well, so, but the, when that, that when that happens, I mean, it's over. There's no, like you said, there's no yeah. bringing it back. The, so, the, so is the rootstock a more dominant plant than what comes above it? Obviously, is that why they generally? Use it? Generally, it's a lot more resilient. Um, it's geared to our soil, our heavy clay soil, and a lot of times it's it's there to make the tree a little smaller, um, mm-hmm. which slows down the growth of the top part. But yeah, it's usually a much faster grower. If you really let that rootstock go, it'll kind of make your tree a little branch and the rest of the tree will be that big, mm-hmm. you know, nasty orange. It was nasty. It was a, it was a nasty, nasty fruit. And, you know, the, uh, and that grapefruit tree, in, in its defense, I think the people, we inherited that tree and they never, pair, they never pruned that thing back and it just went like crazy. And, and so... Right. Sandy's already selected fruit to put in there, so it's not like we're done. We're just going to get fruit that we like now. So that's a beautiful yeah. thing. What they used there used to be fruit t- fruit tastings all the time, where you could like taste all these different citrus and decide which one you want based on the flavor. I'm hoping that comes back mm-hmm. after this whole mess is done. Once we're allowed to get together again. Uh-huh. Carol Burton has written into us. She says, "My uh, tropic snow peach made flowers and peach trees after the freeze." But in the last three weeks, they've all shriveled and the leaves have died. Any thoughts on why? There, there is a new vigorous growth of new shoots and leaves on the main trunk. Well, you know, Carol is one of the people that we have from Urban Harvest uh, yeah. on our Facebook Live all the time. Yeah, I, I figured so. as much. I, I figured as much, by the way, because because she had sent this one in earlier. I'm thinking, OK, this is a friend of Danny's. Oh, nice. <laughs> right. I thought she was oh, just being by, nice. By the way, she just corrected herself. She <laughs> says, new peaches, not trees. So her her new, uh, is it tropic snow peach, I guess, made flowers? Yeah. And peach. Yeah. Okay. You understand what she oh, says. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I would be very surprised if even after, because really it was like a panic flowering. That, that tree was like, I'm about to die. We got to do something for the next generation. And then Carol was able to, through feeding, through soil process, good mulch to kind of get it back to health. And But it didn't have the energy or the um, ability to make those fruit. And so they should be shriveling and falling off because it was like an emergency fruit. A lot of times it happens where you get real mealy citrus after a bad, bad year because it's putting its all of its energy into this last burst you know, save, save the peaches, you know, something like that. So, so you're saying that her tree's a goner is what you're saying. And uh, definitely the peaches this year are goners. No maybe crop next this year. year. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Oh, oh, for the, sure. Okay. Yeah. If the top is good to go and it's still alive and she's seeing new, uh, new leaves, maybe she needs to prune stuff back. I mean, I, I did lose my tropic snow peach, the very same variety she's talking about because it's, it's a warm weather peach. It doesn't mm-hmm. like it that cold, and it did a last gasp, and then died. So. Tropic snow peach. Yeah, they're very low chill hours, and they're huge white peaches. They're so delicious. Now, okay, now you're Ooh. throwing your garden slang around here. Yeah. Um, this is the home improvement <laughs> show. Okay, but the, you want to just real quick, Danny, because we're, we're almost out of time here, but can you real quick explain the freeze hours? Because that's important for people, I think, who are going to be buying trees, um, and especially, you know, the fruit trees, if they expect production. Of course, that, yeah. Right? Yes, gladly. So this is not citrus. Or, or avocados or any tropicals. This is all the other stuff. Blueberries, peaches, plums, apples, yada, yada. So they get an aggregate amount of cool weather hours that they add together around 40 degrees and below. And based on that total number, the tree will make fruit or not. So I saw a peach tree one time for sale and it needed 1,200 chill hours. Well, the average in Houston, I would say is 400, something like that. And so that, that fruit's never going to make a single peach in Houston. And so that's why you really want to make sure that you're buying from good sellers like our co-op members, like the good folks at Home Show Garden Pros, because they actually care to sell you plants that you'll be successful with. So that's what chill hours are. Okay. 
So you, you want to make sure that there's one that fits ours. And what are our, what should we expect? I missed that part. What, what should we uh, expect? You know, my house in Bel Air is like 400. If you're up in the woodlands, maybe 500. Down in Galveston, 350, something like that. Okay. Cool. But, well, Danny, but really, the point of the story is buy your fruit trees from people who know what they're talking about. Ain't, so. ain't that the truth? Yeah, and that's and that's not aisle six at the uh, at the home center. It's, <laughs> no, it's not. one one of the garden pros where the money's going to stay right here in Houston, and, yeah. and they're the kind of people here all the time. I will tell you something that the, I couldn't be happier for the garden centers and what's going on in all of them right now. Um, it has just been the. Um, uh, it's just it's it's been a year of deliverance for them and i'm so happy because they they got whacked for several years you know with harvey and all the other issues that have come through i, I work with uh, nelson's i've worked with them for over 20 years and they um one year he rolf the rolf nelson who, who's you know the dad of the operation told me that in the it rained literally every saturday for one of the summers and it's just, it just, I'm just so happy for them and, and they're doing great. And I think they're, they're really doing a great service for, for the community too, in the way they're operating and just, and really giving people a place to go where they can get the knowledge they need to keep going. And I'm hoping that uh, this, this is business that continues coming to them. Me so, too. And speaking of continuing to come to us, Danny, I'm hoping that you are, are you okay with this coming back in last Thursday? <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love that. That's great. 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 Yeah. Well, we're going to hold you to it. And so we'll, we'll look forward to having you back again um, a couple of, well, last Thursday of the month. What's that? The 24th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 27th, I think, of May. Nice. Wow. That was but good. good the thinking. 25th. That's actually right. The 24th is a Monday. Yeah. And the I'm 25th is a Tuesday. A class on the 24th. 25th is a so Tuesday. 20, and by the 26th way. 26th is the Wednesday. As, <laughs> so. as, as, as night follows day. That's exactly right. And the, the 25th, of course, is a day of, of high holy obligation to my children because it is, mm. of course, uh, the anniversary of, you know, me. When's your <laughs> birthday? Tom? No, Danny. Me? When's your birthday? Oh, I wasn't born. Gotcha. Oh, was, well, Danny was, Tom wasn't <laughs> born. He was, he was brought here. He, you know, he's the one that, that, L. Ron yeah, Hubbard I'm actually not even that. here. I don't exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm a filter. That's it. that's it. No, seriously, when's your birthday, Danny? <laughs> it's November 28th. And Tom, yours? Yes. I have it right it's here. It's his password, it so he well, can't. you play nice. You don't want to say it because it's his password. You know what it is. I was used born to give two out... days before Madonna. We Same used year. to give Tom's birthday out, but the problem is we had to hire extra staff in the mailroom. And so he doesn't want to burden us with that again. Mm. And so we're not going to. Yes. All those presents. Yeah. I was born in 1987. I don't think so. <laughs> yes. I think you were born. I think I, so. I know you were born in 1958, buddy. So. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I was born. Here's one that everybody can look up. I was born the day Elvis's mother died. Well, there you go, kids. That's going to be a riddle <laughs> so, for today. Common and she knowledge. is buried next to the diving board at Graceland because I did a TV show there. And the, her gravestone is right next to the diving board. Yet another reason. I'm to not why. I went there. It creeped me out, too. Yeah, if if you've been wondering why, uh, if, you're, if you just need <laughs> one more reason to go to Memphis, boys and girls, there it is. So Yes. <laughs> I've been. To, I, we drove to Graceland when I was in Memphis a couple uh, yeah. what, last month. We have a new client there. And I said, let's go over to Graceland. Well, yeah, everybody else had the same idea. So, <laughs> we, we didn't much. Get it in. so all right. But I did a TV show there. I got to see the whole place. The only thing you can't see is the bedroom and the bathroom because it's exactly how it was the moment he died. Everything, nothing has been touched. That's what they tell me. We were not, not allowed to go in there. The only person allowed to go in there is his wife at the time. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, cool, yeah. cool. And Danny, I want to thank you for, uh, for <laughs> Danny's freaking out again. Danny's now we like, got another th weird thing to think yeah, about. Danny's kind of gone. I, I wonder if they'd notice if I just kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, how long can you breathe there is my question. <laughs> yeah, in the swimming pool. It's an next indefinite. To his mother. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out from Patty because she's getting research on garages and see what we can work out for you. So, all right, Danny, You're thanks awesome. for being with us, buddy. Appreciate you it. We'll see you. Thanks, Danny. We'll see you again. All right. Yes. Well, that's absolutely. pretty cool. It was fun having Danny here, wasn't it? Let me just yeah, on, release absolutely. him from this I like thing. That. All right. Hey, I got one more question for you before we go. Jibby John, sure. our good buddy who okay. has changed his picture yet again here on his little, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, he says, I got an old wood entry door yes. that's weathered and cracking on the wood seams. When I open it, it bends. Can the door be repaired and restored to strengthen it? What say you, Tom? Usually you don't. Re I mean, anything can be restored. We know that you can take old furniture and have one little DNA grain left and you can reproduce it in today's technology. But is it worth it? No. Usually it's best just to go ahead and buy a new door. If it's cracked and shrinking, the grains are failing, it's going to end up in one of those piles that Danny was talking about when it comes to bad mulch. Uh, I have a feeling that's its destiny. But can you try? You could take the whole thing down. You could dismantle it if it's a solid wood door. Try to disconnect. You know, they use acids and things to dissolve the glues, try to pull all the styles off. And you could replace panels and stuff and try to rebuild it. It would be just a, a, a heck of a project to get through. So my answer is like a toaster. It's probably time to go find a new door. And if you're in Houston, Door Clearance Center would be a good place. It's not worth the time unless there's some kind of historical uh, mm -hmm. issue with it or something of that nature. Yeah. And they got great doors. They even have seconds up there if you don't mind. And you want to save some extra money. We got a couple of them in our kitchen and... We can. Oh, did I you? Mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's one of the. Well, when you say seconds, there were doors that weren't picked up that were pre-ordered, right? Or, or they have so, some some slight defects or something in them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but nothing. But they nothing weren't bad. in somebody's home that came out. They're still. No, it's not like I'm getting them second. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, well, you said seconds. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Well, now we do. I'm going to pull this car over. Okay. No. <laughs> I knew it. I'm trying to get hopefully the five people watching to know it too. Right. Okay. No. All right. I got okay, it. Okay. It wasn't me. I could care less. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just here to tell you, don't tell somebody like me, oh, it has minor imperfections. You'll never find them. I mean, seriously, yes. you know what I've done since those doors have been going, Connie in? Every time I'm sitting in that kitchen, I'm going, I know it's here somewhere. You're staring at it? Yeah, I would do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cursed. All right. So, but you... Dear viewer, do not have to worry about a curse if you're doing home improvements because you can go to homeshowradio.com and find the people we trust, the mm -hmm. Home Show Pros. We'll scroll up here. There you go. There are all of the Home Show Pros we have uh, on the homepage waiting for you. Or if you want to search them by category, go right here and um, you can see them arrayed in all their splendor um, by category. And that's how you can find the people that Tom trusts who have been in business enough years to be trusted. They've got insurance, a permanent location, good reviews. What was the other thing? A, um, a, um, it was, oh, good, good banking history or something. Or good, good. Um, but thanks Jeff. Yeah. Thanks Jeff. But what, what is it you refer to that as it's, um, you check their bank references or something. Oh, you got to check their business references as far as their banks, where they buy their materials. So the easiest thing to call it is a business reference, the people they do business with to produce the product for you. So yes, make sure you call their bank. Now, everybody should have a banker they work with. Charlie, you're in business. I'm sure you've got a banker that I, I know I do, Dela. Two or three of them, who Tom, are my... you kidding? <laughs> yeah, two or three of them. One's enough. Uh, just, you know, just, hey, is you good standing with your bank? Yeah, we've done mm -hmm. business with Charlie for many years. Great company. That's all you want to hear. If you ask those questions, mm -hmm. the bad guys will run away as fast as lightning. And the good guys will say, let me get this clear. Let me get everybody's name. Where they buy their materials. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, you know, purchasing. Hey, does these guys pay their bills on time? Yeah, they pay. We've been we're doing, he, he's been buying lumber here for 15 years. Good. That's all you need to know. Just, yeah, they're not going to tell you his bank balance, but they're going to say, yeah, he's a good company. He's been with us a long time. It's not. Now, it's more of a just checking right. on people deeper than they would expect. On the other hand, if you call yes. and they say, have you seen him? You know that's not your guy. <laughs> Do you know where he is? <laughs> <laughs> or the other one, here's the one you get is, who? Who? <laughs> then you know it's not good. <laughs> or, or if you're okay. a click followed by a dial tone, you'll know, find another yes. contractor. All right. 
Hey, yes. by the way, um, if you'd like to get your questions onto this or our daily Ask Tom videos, Tom Tom loves to put a new one up every day. He wants to help. That's why he's. That's why. That's why Tom exists is because he wants to help you make your home a better, safer place and more efficient and and all that stuff. Um, you can we put them up at homeshowradio.com our facebook page and our youtube channel and the way you get into that fun fest is you go here to homeshowradio.com click on that ask tom button right there it'll take you to this page and you can send us videos and um pictures and all stuff in fact tom when when we get done here we're going to record them for the the coming week what well, somebody has sent yeah. us in a video so you're going to get get to see in detail what they're talking about, which is kind of cool. I like it. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. you can find those on our, our website and all that. And then, of course, you can find Tom on the radio. That's right. Every Saturday, 9 to noon, except for this weekend, actually. I'm off an hour early because of the NFL draft on Sports Radio 610. And Sunday, 8 to 11. And Charlie starts the show off with me because he helps me do some interviews and we do some get some questions from the uh, our website. And of course, Mr. Danny, we just talked to him, seven to nine on Saturdays. He'll answer your, your gardening questions with all his uh, garden pros that help him out. I, I'm certainly hoping that somebody in the graphics department and was watching today and knows that we need an updated graphic on that page. Uh, probably not. No, well, I do them, and so I'll give you a talk <laughs> no, after the show. No. So, yeah, our graphics yes, department. Hang best. on, let me get him. <laughs> yes. yes? <Zach. laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's it for this week. Thank you. We will be back again live. We promise next Thursday. Thank you for understanding yeah. the, the last couple of weeks. We've had some conflicts, but we will be back again live with you again next Thursday, four o'clock central time on Facebook and YouTube and anywhere else. They'll allow us to do this by law. Have a great week. Got a question. Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. Home show. Home show. Home show. from a pro who knows Home Show Radio Home Show, Home show. Home show.